Right, my dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, salamun alaikum. Firstly, um, can I have a show of hands regarding tonight's dinner? Um, we have two options, either pizza or burgers. <laughs> um, pizza? So pizza? I think burgers won. Half and half, yeah. Both, whoever voted for both. <laughs> okay. On behalf of the Jamaat and the Basi Youth Committee, I would like to welcome you all to this interactive seminar on Are We Losing Our Sense of Koja Shia Isnashri Identity? This event is part of a wider project entitled The Awakening Project of the Koja Shia Isnashri Community which was first established in the United Kingdom in February 2011. The project is a worldwide initiative which, which seeks participation and reform from people themselves. Madrasa teachers, professionals, volunteers, scholars, laymen and laywomen, youths and the elderly. In short, the Awakening Project poses two central questions. Are the institutions of the Madrasa, member and family unit, dynamic enough in a fast-paced modern world to develop spiritually and critically minded individuals or have they remained stagnant in only fulfilling basic religious and ritual needs? Secondly, can we together create a solution that microscopes these institutions in order to effectively address our intellectual and social problems? We will start this evening with Quran recitation by Brother Zainali Banjwani. Please welcome him with the loud salawat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى أن يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكن خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان ومن لم يتوب فأولئك هم الظالمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعض الظن إثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا أبدا 
أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وجعلنا صدق الله العلي العظيم Ahsan, thank you to Brother Zain Ali for that beautiful recitation. So, when we are approached by our friends or colleagues at work and they ask us, what is your identity? Where do you come from? Majority of us will say, we are Koja, Shia, Isna, Shri Muslim. However, are we able to fully define this identity? How many of us know how we acquired this identity? We are lucky to have our guest speaker, Dr. Sikdain Panjwani, who is the former Secretary General of the World Federation from 1997 to 2003 and is based in London. Having qualified as a dentist from the University of Manchester and obtained his MA in Medical Law and Ethics from King's College London and a PhD in Law from the University of Essex, he went on to work closely with Marhum Mullah Askarili Jafar at the World Federation. After his death, Dr. Sipthain Panjwani continued to be an active in Shia in an active to, sorry, continued to be active in Shia and wider Muslim community affairs. He also has a special interest in bioethics in Islam and currently operates on a freelance basis in both Muslim community life and wider academic environment. So the format of today's event will be an 
initial presentation by Dr. Subthane, during which he will pose some questions to the crowd. Following this, there will be a brief discussion, a question and answer session, chaired by Sajid Asajin, followed by dinner. If anyone wishes to ask questions, please feel free to write this down on a piece of paper. On this note, I would like to invite Dr. Subthane Panjwani to the podium, who will present this interactive seminar. Let's all welcome him with a loud salawat. Brothers and sisters, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, sister, for uh, introduction. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity, uh, first of all, to thank you for coming and uh, listening to this uh, topic. It's a topic of importance for our community. Uh, and I would like to thank the Abbasi Youth Group for uh, in taking this initiative and uh, inviting me to present this uh, particular seminar. Now this is the uh, first Jamaat who has undertaken to talk about the Kodashia Ishnashwe Muslim identity. And so it's um, a pleasure for me to come to this Jamaat and I'm hoping that I would go to other Jamaats to conduct similar <coughs> seminars. Uh, the first slide uh, is the hadith of uh, our uh, first Imam, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib <laughs> And uh, I would like to note this particular hadith because it is a very powerful hadith uh, in which Imam Ali salam says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the man who works out his soul molds his nafs and prepare for his grave and knows where he came from, where he is, and where he is going. This is a very important, a deeply held hadith of our Imam. This particular quotation, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Who do you think uh, said that? Any idea? Well, it was Abraham Lincoln who said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. The future is in your hand. The future of this community is in our hand. So we will talk about the legacy of this community and perhaps chart out or think about the future also from the point of view of identity. Identity means a lot in today's world in the 21st century. The reason why I have put this particular slide because I would like to congratulate whoever has prepared this uh, particular portrait. Not of that lady, but what do you call it? A portrait or a poster? Poster, that's, that's it, yeah. What I like about it is that uh, he or she was able to portray that, and then that figure, and then that figure, and incorporated a lot of things within that particular poster. So I'd like to, to congratulate. But the topic... Uh, that I would be concentrating upon is identity. And uh, therefore, beginning, uh, I would like to begin with definition so we are all in the same page. Uh, it's very important to understand the difference between culture and identity. Uh, 
I'm not going to talk about culture, although culture will be incorporated in my talk, but let's just look at the difference. Culture means one's language, beliefs, values, customs, and all other things that make up a community. Whilst identity is about how individuals like ourselves or groups see and define themselves and how others see and define them. So what is very important to note is there is no religion without culture and there is no culture without religion. But religion is not culture. So bear that in mind and keep that differentiation. It's very important uh, when I whilst I talk about this particular topic of identity. If we, we are sometimes asked, who are you, where do you come from? What are those questions really meant to ask us? When somebody says, who are you, and where you come from, what they really want to know is, are you like me, or are you different from me? Yes? Yes. Are you like me or are you different from me? It's very important. If you are like me, then I have some associations with you. If you are different from me, then how I can come to know you and see if I can be like you if I like it or not like you if I don't like it. That, you can all hear me? Okay. Uh, so it's very important to, to, to understand when a questioner asks you something like that. The other type of question that we sometimes, particularly in Britain, do come across is somebody would say to you, are you British? Now, many uh, people are very honest and sincere about it when they ask uh, this particular question, are you British? But then there are some who will go beyond that and would say, are you British first or Muslim first? And when somebody asks you, are you British first or Muslim first, immediately something enters in our mind. What has this questioner, why is that questioner asking me this question now? Are you British first or are you Muslim first? And if you were to say, I'm Muslim first, then perhaps she would say or he would say, well, in that case, you are not British. And then if they say, if you say, I am British first, double talk. He's only saying it, but he's really a Muslim. Well, the debate has gone beyond that now. Uh, I mean, we used to have this question, but now the debate is uh, Muslims in Britain and Muslims of Britain. I don't want to get involved with that debate. What are we? We are British Muslim citizens, and we want to stick to that. But that is the debate according to Professor Tariq Ramadan. And he expresses it and explains it so well. He says, you know, the whole notion of um, st state nation is now being um, analyzed. So what is a state and what is a nation? A state is a structure where we all contribute and we become citizens and we get a passport. That's a state. We've got a British passport of the state United Kingdom. A nation is a narrative. And we Muslims do not belong to that narrative. How do we not belong to that narrative? We don't belong to that narrative in this way that many have you heard of the word unofficial citizens? Or do you remember those, um, during the Olympics uh, uh, event, there was this guy, Mo something, and he won, and then there was an issue about plastic citizens. Have you heard of that, that expression, plastic citizen? Now, plastic citizen means that, you know, you are outsider from within. So you are a citizen, but you don't belong to this narrative of a nation. And so Muslims have got a lot of uh, uh, things to do. For example, there's a lot of respect and trust to earn uh, within the United Kingdom. Uh, who is going to do that? You see, out there in the European space or the British space, 
in the landscape out there, there is synagogue there, and there is church there, but there is no space for a mosque. Mosque doesn't come in the narrative of European history. Synagogues do. Churches do. And it is somebody's job to also bring mosques into the European narrative so that Muslims become part of the nation of United Kingdom. Who is going to do that? This has to fall upon the younger generation. You guys, younger people, I know there are quite a few old people here. Not old, buzurg, respectable buzurg. So the young people have to now work at introducing mosque in the space out there. Mosque has to be part and parcel of the grand narrative of European history. And that's important. So identity is very important and it has to be understood in a meaningful and a beneficial way. And, th and that's what we're going to talk about. So my uh, uh, sub uh, submission to you would be that keeping identity in the 21st century, a case study of Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity. I have done it in a very sem semi-academic way uh, because uh, these presentations uh, would also be given to hopefully non uh, away from our own communities as well. So it's like a case study of our own community, basically. So the research question that I asked was, are we losing our sense of Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity? That is my research question. And that research question came about because of the awakening project. Sorry, oh, beg, beg your pardon. Right. Because of the awakening project that I embarked upon in 2011, this project, in a very uh, concise way, uh, is to examine the challenges our community, Koja Shia Ishnashu Muslim community, is facing in today's world. And then looking at our enduring institutions of our community, in my estimation and my research, there are three enduring institutions, Madrasa, member and family. If, if our community did not have these three institutions, we would not be a community. And these three institutions are getting weaker and weaker and weaker in my research. And so we have to look at the challenges out there and then we have to microscope our institutions and then we have to see how we can strengthen these institutions. And so I, when I go out to Toronto, Dubai, Dar es Salaam, Madagascar, Reunion, talking to the grassroots of our community, one of the questions that keep repeatedly coming up to me is the one of identity. And therefore, I uh, wrote two papers. The first paper I uh, wrote was May 2014. You can get all this from the website that uh, I have. Uh, how important is our Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity to us? And the second uh, paper that I wrote was just last month, or two months. Uh, are we losing our sense of Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity? Look at the wording. Are, are we losing, you know, I'm getting a bit old here. Uh, uh, there it is. There, there. Are we losing our sense of Koja Shia Ishnashu Muslim identity? I don't, I'm not saying are we losing our Koja Shia Ishnashu Muslim identity. Sense, our balance, our right mindedness, our dis discernment about who we are. Are we losing it? Don't we care? Maybe we don't care about it. You know, let it go. Somebody else can give us identity and we'll just accept it and go about it. Is it a right thing to do for a community of ours? So I wrote this paper, these papers, and you know, I got comments uh, from a very passive community of ours. <laughs> That's fantastic. I got comments from Africa. Look at these comments. The youth fraternity look at inclusion of Koja as not necessary, to put it mildly. How many of you agree with that? Just raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to speak about it. How many of you agree with that? Okay. 
that you have to ask him, not me, because that's a comment I have received, but on the surface of it. If you feel yes, just, I mean, you don't have to explain or anything like that. You don't have to rationalize. If you feel this is right, just, but okay. Uh, otherwise, we, we'll, we might, uh, you know, take up our time. Uh, the other comment that came is they look down on the Koja institution. That's another thing. Okay? Then I got comments from Europe. This Koja identity is a subject I have pondered over since my time at university. And I'm no closer to solving the answer than I was a decade ago. I think lots of you agree with that, yeah? Or you may, <laughs> so all you know about identity very well. Okay, the other one, Muslim part and the Shia Ishnashri part of our identity tend to be easier to assume due to our practices and beliefs. However, the Koja element does not seem to sit as well in this day and age. Then this is another one. My experience with the Koja community has been a very mixed one. I feel when it suits them, their identity is Ahlul Bayt. But when it suits them, it's British, business life, or East African, how they celebrate their weddings, etc. If a person inculcates and practices these Koja values, we accept him and opens door for marriage, business, position in the Jamaat. How about that? This, was, no, this wasn't from the Koja, it was from a non. And then as time passes and we have a new generation of membership born in Europe, the Koja identity is at greater risk. Quite a number of Jamaats have dropped the name Koja in their official organization names as well as in their constitutions. Comments from North America. In my early years, I perhaps did not really know any different Shia community to even consider the Koja identity. At that time, I may have even thought our imams were Khojas. Of course, we had a sense of belonging to the community, and this sense was almost innate, inborn. Interesting comments. Is it worth still clinging on the Khoja heritage and identity, or should we focus our energies on a new Shia identity? There are two major contributing factors leading to the dilution of our identity. Our religious and historical grounding is very weak at best. Transformation taking place due to globalization of cultures. And finally, the solution lies in challenging the status quo by awakening the conscious and creating awareness all around. Something that nobody wants to hear, but we have to keep hammering it. This is from North America. It is very sad in our community that we do not take pride for the Koja heritage. Instead, they, means youth, make fun and say we are a lost community. How many of you think these comments are really relevant comments? They are relevant comments, yeah? Yeah. So I think we need to decipher, we need to unveil things and see really whether our identity and the reflection that I just gave you matches up. And so let's ask the first fundamental question. Who are Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslims? Any, anyone to start this thing off? Okay, the first thing that we, we, I would like to put across to you is what is the perception of people out there about our community? I think it's important to to say now, I haven't done this. Uh, I haven't taken this reflection or perception uh, just out of thin air. This is from the research, so official research. People who have understood the Gujarati community have understood the Koja community. Some of them have studied them. So I'm going to put their reflection here, so we understand how others think about us. This is what they say. We are flexible, we are tolerant, we are understanding, we are adaptable. We are family conscious, we are business minded or business oriented. We want our children to be professional and majority of us want them to be accountant, dentist, doctors, pharmacist. We are Gujaratis at heart Look at our customs, food, and all that. And, sorry? 
we what? Oh, we'll come to that. We'll come to that, yeah. yeah. I'm going very slowly with you so that I can draw a picture for you. Uh, right. And we are philanthropists. A lot, pe- lot of people out there have that perception that we are philanthropists, that we give money for charity. In fact, not only Khojas, but all Gujaratis are like that as a cultural trait. So that is, that is interesting. But what is our background? And I want to talk about our background because that's very important. About 700 years ago, the peers and Sayyids from Iran of Ismaili or Sufi thought processes came to Afghanistan. And why Afghanistan? They came to Sindh and Gujarat. And what they did was that our great, 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 great grandfathers were staying there. So they came and they taught they, they, they created a mixture of belief, Islam and Hinduism. So they had, there was this mixture which they called it, they called it Sat Panth. Sat Panth. Sat Panth means the true path. And those who believed in Sat Panth were called Sat Panthis. Now, those who were believing Satpanth, who were believing in Satpanthis, amongst those many groups, there were a large number of one group called Khoja. And that group's peer was Pir Sadruddin. And Pir Sadruddin was a very s- smart guy. And he contributed a lot in developing this Khoja culture. So what he did was he created Ginan. This is prayers. Gnan comes from the Sanskrit word Gnan. Gnan means knowledge, ill. So he had those prayers book. Then he made lots of Jamaat Khanas. And then also he created, wonderful thing, he created alphabets and called it Khojki. Khojki. And those alphabets were secret alphabets. And the Gnans and our accounts were written with this alphabet, so nobody could understand it. So, you know, a lot of things are coming up, aren't they? And the last thing is that he gave us the title. And the title was Khwaja. Khwaja turned into Khoja. It comes from a Luhana word, Thakur, means master. So when we say Muslim Khoja, we say Muslim master. He's a master. Right? So that was our beginning of our community. Then when you look at the British gazetteers of 17th century and 16th century, you find that they mention about Khojas. What do they say? They say Khoja as a community, they used to meet themselves in a center. They used to meet themselves as a community. They used to marry amongst themselves. And if there's a dispute within the the community, they used to solve it by the community themselves. And if somebody doesn't obey the ruling of the community, he used to be banned. Let me tell you one thing. I am so pleased that those who understand Gujarati and those who are our elders, they had the mastery of four or five languages. That's why they spread themselves so well, because of the language. Look at our children today. How many languages can you speak? English. You don't, you don't want to speak Gujarati. You don't want to understand Kachi. You don't want to Urdu. I'm not sure about that. But Marshia, they, they reside in Urdu. Anyway, but that's a point to take. Uh, no joke. So what happened was, this was in the pre-colonial times. Okay? This, this, this was a Khoja community existing pre-colonial time. When the British came, some events impacted our community, the Khoja community. What were they? 
first thing when the British came, they came with a mindset that they had in Britain. What was their mindset? Their mindset was that there was a Protestant, there was Catholic, there was Methodist. You can't have a person who says, I'm a Protestant and I'm a Catholic and I'm also a Methodist. Uh, uh, yeah, Methodist. That's not the mindset of Britain. So when British began to take the census, Khoja had to define themselves. Are they Hindu or Muslims? And the second thing that was happening is because the values of British were promoted in India, there was a reaction by Hindus and Muslims of Islamization and Sanskritization. Because they didn't want the children to become British, they wanted the children to have the values of Islam. So obviously Khojas had to define themselves what they are. So they, they start, they define themselves that we are Muslim. The reason why they define themselves as Muslim is because if you look at the Islamic part of the mixture of Satpant, there is a lot of elements of Shia Madhab there. Our community at that time used to bury their dad in Karbala and Najaf. You know, we have a 700 years of history in Islam and 160 years of history as a community. So, you know, this was in the Satpant, and, and the, we, we used to, they used to celebrate Muharram and Ashura and all that. So when the time came, they defined themselves as Muslims. So that was the first event. The second event was that there was a person called Aga Khan, Aga Khan number one. We have Aga Khan number four at the moment. We had Aga Khan number one. Aga Khan number one, because of the disturbance in Iran in 1841, this guy removed himself from Iran and came to Afghanistan and he had a good relationship with Britain and British gave Aga Khan one protection and so he arrived in India to Calcutta and from Calcutta he came to Bombay where a sizable number of Khoja community were residing. Now as you know Khoja community were quite independent and autonomous community. They used to keep their accounts in Khojki, didn't they? Secret, all that. So they were, they were quite independent, you know. And when Aga Khan came and he started to interfere with the community, um, there were opposition to him and there were dispute. And one dispute went to the High Court of Bombay. And in that High Court, the judge who presided was Judge Arnold. And Judge Arnold, when this case came about Khoja, he had, to, he had to understand, who are these people, Khoja? So he started to dig into the historical records and everything. And because he found this Khoja word ambiguous, so he wanted to make sure that he understood what this Khoja meant. And then he arrived at the definition of Khoja. And so the first legal definition of our community was done in 1861 by Judge Arnold. Now there were some Khojas, because of the definition that he gave, the, these Khojas did not accept it. So they parted from the main Khoja community and called themselves Khoja Sunnis. Then in 1908, there was a famous case of Haji Bibi. Now Haji Bibi was a cousin of Aga Khan. And he said to Aga Khan that you are an Ishnashri. And so your status is only like a peer. Because Ishnashris had an Imam. So what happened was that the case went to uh, court again and again the definition came and the judge at that time defined that the authority of Aga Khan remained supreme with the Koja community. When he did that, many other Kojas came out and they formed themselves as Koja Shia, Ishnashri Muslim community. That was in 1908. So you can imagine, we had a Koja Satpant as a as a identity. Then our, our great-grandfathers gave us a multiple identity. Khoja, Shia, Ishnashari, Muslim. Multiple identity. Fantastic. They gave us a good start. So what happened was that in 
So the, in 1872, unfortunately and sadly, our own Khoja Shia Ishnashri Muslim uh, research is not that uh, superior, if I can put it this way, academic. And so a lot of data is there, but we need to really collect this data and make it into an academic form so that our own Shia Ishnashri history can be charted. So we rely upon others at the moment, but we need to do this work. Anyway, in 1872, a group of people went to uh, Iraq in Najaf, and they met uh, Ayatollah Zainul Abedin Mazandarani. And when they were having a chat and conversation, he found that the, the group who were there were very weak in Aqaid. So he sent two mobile games, Maharashi to Zanzibar and uh, Qadir Hussain Karbalai to Bombay. And then we had our Aqaid strengthened from Najaf, from the Marja. Okay? So we then formed our own community, Muslim Khoja Shia Ishnashri. And in 1933, Kachi businessmen who had a lot of contacts in Burma, in Africa, in Japan, and they decided that, you know, we have to be united to preserve our identity. So they called a conference in Bhuj, no, in Mundra, I think. And there were 14 centers who participated, 52 delegates, and the dates were 7th and 9th November 1933. And the businessman who was much more forward in this was Hajit Dawood Nasr Mauji. And they formed a, they, they, they had a conference. Then in 1945, the intellectuals of East Africa decided to have uh, a, another conference, which they called East African Provincial Council. And then they decided to have a constitutional conference in 1946, and they had East African Federation, then Africa Federation. And then what happened in the 70s and 80s, there was exodus from Zanzibar, Somalia, Uganda, and so our community spread. And in 1976, we formed a World Federation. So this is where we are. The reason why we came together is to unite ourselves and keep our identity. So that's the historical background. So you see, we started with Khoja, then Khoja Shia Ishnashri Muslim. Now we live in a world which is so diverse. There is so much diversity. We cross boundaries every day. There are communities that we interact with. There are languages that we have to learn. There are values that we have to negotiate. The world is globalized. And we don't have a land or a country, do we? We have our Imambara, which is a country for us. We're a small community. But we have identity, which is Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim. So how can we preserve this identity in a world which is now diverse? It's a very important question. Should we preserve it, or should we just let it go? Just like Iraqis, and just like Iranis, and just like Lebanese, our great-grandfathers also spilled blood to preserve the faith. Should we just let it go? Should we not care about it? Let others define us? Should we just remain asleep? I would have expected a full of, you know, the, the whole full, but maybe they're not bothered. We are not bothered. Others are bothered. Others look at us. Others they think that there is so much gratifying things in that community, yet we don't appreciate it. Why is that? Why are we so passive? Anyway, I've taken all my things on to you. Second question that I had to deal with was how can we deal, how do we deal with change? Important question. Because that's the worst thing a thing has, you know, when you are comfortable, and change occurs, and you have to face it, 
we don't like it. But if we don't do anything, change will overtake us. We will not control the change. So the challenge of change is this. Look at this. This is a thick community. A thick community has a, a wall around it. Look, like that. You see that? It doesn't allow different race there. It doesn't allow outsider there. It doesn't allow different culture there. It doesn't allow different values there. Who do you think we are? You think we are this community? And if we are, can we sustain it? Look, I'm asking you all. How about one couple of hands and then we'll go, we'll go on. Do you think we are a thick community first? No? Yes? Yes, we are. Overwhelmingly thick community or maybe a bit of semi, semi ah, I like that. That's very good. What's your name? Shabir. Shabir. I know you. Okay. But do you think that we were like that at one time? But we improved. I think we have. Don't you think? We have improved in many ways. We have. And, you know, that is our strength. And that's what I want to deal with afterwards. But we are very adaptable and versatile people. Okay. Do we want to get into that, though? Thin community. No walls at all. Allow everyone. Freedom, maximum. Diversity, maximum. Individualism, maximum. Community, God. Do we want to be like that? Do you think that if we don't take action, we will end up like that? Do you think that we want to be like that? Should we do something about it? Yeah. What? <laughs> Which is the most difficult thing to do. <laughs> how do you think, anyone, how do you think that we should, if we, if we have to change, how should we change? How should we change? What is the fundamental things that, will, that would allow us to change? One thing, yes. Okay, part of it, okay. Anyone? Like this? <laughs> yes. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Good. Anyone else? Yeah. I think more scholars should be called like this. Okay, good. Good. Yes, they should be. Why not? I am all for it. You know, we are a young community, 160 years, but the resources that we have, that Allah has blessed us, is enormous. The only thing is that we don't even realize it. Our youngsters have got so much resources, intellectual resources, and yet we don't tap into it. They're getting bored. That's the problem. You see, I was told today that uh, the maximum span of... Uh, Mm, what is it, span of uh, listening, is it? Attention. Attention span is going down and down to only 12 minutes now. So my presentation must be very smart. But, you know, I can't be very smart. I'm an old chappy. It's difficult for me to do a TED. Is it TED talk? You know, walking from here to there, I'll just collapse walking down. And there. <laughs> I better stand here. But it would be a smart presentation. I'm not going to just take, go on and on. But there you are. We don't want to be thin community. And thank you very much, brother, for your, for your input. And thank you very much for all of yours. So anyway, what is important is that if our community is underpinned by values, values, then we can easily adapt to any changes. This is very important, as you pointed out. Community fundamental values. So what is the, our community fundamental values? What are they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry? 
Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah, it's all, it's all getting into it. I'm glad you're, you're, you're connecting everything. But community fundamental values. So I studied constitutions. Yeah, I was Secretary General of the World Federation for uh, some years. I was with Marum Saheb, and I had opportunity to visit lots of Jamaats. Approximately 100 Jamaats, I think we have, maybe five to six Federation. I'm now not a very au fait with World Federation, but I think that's, uh, that's uh, how many Federations we have. But when you study the constitutions of our Jamaat, these are the core values that come up in the constitution. We want to have a flourishing of godly values, taqwa. We want to be doing things with wisdom, hekuma. That's why we organize ourselves. We want to have integrity in our community. That is why we take care of ourselves as to where we are, what we do. Ihsan, integrity. We want to be just and fair, not only to ourselves, but to others who participate in our community, which we are. And then we also want to be compassionate and caring, which we are. When we came in this country in 1972, and we, form, we organized ourselves into jamaats, then the other communities, Punjabi, Pakistani, Iraqi, Irani communities used to come. I was Secretary General. Used to come to visit us and say, help us. We also want to get organized just like you are. And our community rallied in Midlands, in the North, South, in Europe. And we contributed because we have that value. These are our values. And we have to make sure that our children and our families, and from the member, these values are talked about in a most contemporaneous way. What does hikmah mean in today's time? What does ihsan mean in today's time? What does adil mean in today's time? And what does rahmah mean in today's time? So if we have the values like that, did you, did you notice that thick and thin community? If we have to change from a thick community to a thin community, we would be able to draw a line using these core values, that we cannot go beyond that. We will accept anyone who is following, or we will change depending upon these values. So what we need to do is to always, in the process of reconstruction and deconstruction. Look, when we were a cultural community, Koja Satpanti, remember all that? Legal definitions came. We formed ourselves, Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim community, based on not culture, based on madhab, madhab of Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalla. That is why. That is why Imam Bara is our country. We don't have a country out there. Do Kojas have a country? Kojastan? No. Imam Bara is our country. And we have named it as Imam Bara. Because we take our values from who? Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And so we have to have universal principles as a part and parcel for our community. What are they? The first thing is that we should have that as a principle, a must principle to be a Muslim. Tawheed, prophethood, maad. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. We believe in the accountability, the day of judgment. Must do. The second principle is that as a community, we must educate ourselves. We must educate our children. Because education is central to Islamic tradition. It is a sad fact that when you look at the Muslim countries today, women are not educated to the extent that they should be. How can we call ourselves Islamic? when the women folks are still left behind. Educate oneself is our principle, our community's principle, that we must make sure that our children are educated to the highest extent in all the fields. And then we must practice what we believe in. Khosnazan must be part and parcel of this community, good intention. 
So when we come to a meeting, we must come to a meeting with good intention so that we can be constructive about everything. There are lots of interpretations out there. Lots of interpretation. In Islam, there are 73 interpretations. And today, one interpretation is calling another interpretation kafir. But what do we have to do as Shia and Sunni? We have to have three things. We have to have husnazan. Our scholars must have husnazan. We must be consistent in our knowledge. And the third thing is that we must act within the Shia Sharia. If we do that, anything under that can be discussed. But husnazan plays an important part. And then we must do, do good deeds. Surah Wal Asr. In al insan Allah fi khusr. Ila lazina amanu wa amilu salihat. Do good deeds. That's how we can survive in this world. It's a journey. As Imam Ali alayhi salam said what? Have mercy on that man who works his soul. He controls the nafs and prepares for the grave and knows where he's going, where he's at, and where he came from. This is our community. And we must realize it. Is my time up? Oh my God. So last bit then, very quickly. Eh? How many minutes? Do you all want me to finish here then? Can I carry on? Uh, you're overruled. Okay. Right. And, and you very quickly, uh, wisdom is the lost property of a believer. In other words, wherever you are, whether you are in Britain, whether you're in Africa, whether you're in Canada, wisdom is the lost property of a believer. Take it from wherever it comes from. If it comes from our own Khoja Shia Muslim culture, take it. Good things. Eh? Look at the British society we are living in. If there are good things in a British society, it's our right. Take it. Take the good and discard the bad. And bring to the British society all the good things that we have, like generosity, like fairness, like looking after our parents, like looking after our elders. These are good things. Contribute in a society that we are living in. And then take from other cultures all that is good. And this is how we may have to develop our identity. Okay, to the question. Are we losing our sense of Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity? What's your sense? Are we losing it? We are losing it. And we have to go something to do about we have to do something about it? Good. Okay. So we are in the same plane. Right. The first test is very quickly. Foundational overarching principle. Zain Ali recited a fantastic ayat. This is the first test from the Quran. O mankind, indeed we created you from a male and female and made you nations and tribes that you may identify with one another. Indeed, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the most god weary among you. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. What do we learn from that particular verse? We learn this. That in our globalized world, Muslims have no alternative but to organize themselves into smaller group based on their ethnicity or geographic origin for the sake of peaceful coexistence and efficiency. Nobody should tell you, you know, as a Koja, you're not doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing because that's how we can become efficient and exist for the sake of peace. peace. It is impossible for any one person or institution to serve the whole Ummah. Therefore, to undertake to serve part of Ummah is also viable. You don't have to serve everyone. Serve your neighbors. Serve your other communities. The only un-Islamic or anti-Islamic action would be to consider oneself to be superior to others. That's the only un-Islamic thing. Taqwa is the overarching principle for us. So last thing, the second test is this one. And that's a very important test. Have we got the necessary ingredients to adapt ourselves and be a dynamic community? Yes, we have. Look, languages... We can have as we can learn many languages. Don't you know? I, my, my appeal to young people: learn Gujarati. That's your matru basha, mother tongue. Sorry. And if, if you don't want to learn and write, just understand at least. That's one thing. 
Second, we have a fantastic community, history. 160 years we have survived. How have we survived? Without army, without country, without royal navy, without no, everything. We survived. There must be something very good in this community. Then we've got very good networking, you know, and versatility. That's why uh Kazim Hatun Kawanu Kawanu Kawanu. That's how we do networking. And the last thing, a very important thing, is core values. We've got fantastic core values which are Islamic. Because our community is based not on culture, on madhab of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as There I stop. So how many minutes did I take then? Very little. You know, if you had asked me to go on and on, I would have continued. But, you know, I'm okay, fine. Question and answer then. You don't have any question and answer. Oh, sorry, the table is coming. All right. Am I sitting here? So we can put the light on now. Um, can we have a loud salawat for uh, Dr. Sitain Punjwani for an amazing presentation? Um, any questions that we would like to start with? Yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As if in, in the last 40 years that you've been involved, you've been here in this country, presumably, and you've been heavily involved in the World Federation. What do you think? How, how do you think we have lost or, uh, our identity or what are we losing in the community um, that used to define us before? What is your opinion on the identity of the Koja Shia uh, worldwide? Because you said you've traveled um, you know, the world at, um, and, and gone to different uh, communities. All right, okay. That's a good question. Thank you very much. Um, we haven't lost the core identity completely. What's happening is that there is not much interest in the future of the community. That's what I feel. I think that more or less we are taking our community for granted, that it will be like this forever and ever and ever for all your children and children's children. Well, my take is that it won't be because the challenge is out there and my other presentations, I haven't come here to talk about awakening project. If I had, I would have talked about what sort of challenges we're facing, huge for a small community. And if we don't take action uh, now, we've got to take action in five, seven, ten years from now. But, you know, it would be difficult. That's why this awakening project, Jagruti, awakening, I've started. But the thing is we are taking it for granted. And we have now to, it's very important now to make sure that we don't take this community for granted. And that means that the youngsters have to make sure that they take interest in the making this community alive. Otherwise it will be a dead community. If we don't contribute to this community, if we don't contribute in the right way, this community would not be a moving community. It was just a ritual community, accepting anything from anyone, thinking that, oh, it's not my job. It's our job. It's all your job. Leadership has to be backed by all of us, and the direction must be right. So we're not 
to answer. We are not losing our right. We are not lost our identity. The sense is beginning to go, and that sense has to come back that we are a community which is alive, which is moving, which provides values to our children, which provides values to ourselves, and they are good values, values from Ahlul Bayt Did I answer your question? Um, anyone from the ladies want to ask a question? No? Yeah, Uncle, do you want to ask? Gujarati, you might have a bully show, Gujo. I am going for that, no problem on that. But you down. Marukevano Suche, Abola. Tame Jocho, I am youths, Ketlacha, the Chokra, Melma. હું ફિમેલ ને શાબાશી આપું છું કે એ લોકોની યુથ ઘણી છે મારો મતલબ કહેવાનો એ છે કે આ જમાતના યુથ ને આપણે કેવી રીતે સમજાવી શકીએ કે આ ચીજ બહુ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ છે એ લોકો માટે અને એ લોકોના ફ્યુચર માટે તો એ લોકોને કેવી રીતે આપણે કહી શકીએ કે તમે આવો એ લોકોને એટલું ચાન્સ દીધા છે આપણે કે એક થર્સડે ના યુથ એ લોકોનું પ્રોગ્રામ રાખે છે યુથ તો અમે પણ આવ્યા છે એ યુથના પ્રોગ્રામમાં કારણ કે એ લોકોને એમ ના થાય કે અમે એ લોકોને એવોઇડ કરીએ છીએ આજે જો એ લોકોનું પ્રોગ્રામ છે ફોર ધેર બેનિફિટ પણ આજે કેટલા યુથ છે આપણી જમાતના અહીંયા આપણી જમાતમાં વધારે અત્યારે યુથ છે પણ આજે એક કે નથી અહીંયા આ ગણેલા છે જે છોકરાઓ એજ્યુકેટેડ છે પણ બીજા બી છે એજ્યુકેટેડ કેમ એ લોકો નથી આવતા આપણે આપણે એ લોકોને કેવી રીતે અહીંયા લઈ આવી શકીએ તમે How many of you did not understand that question? Seriously, you know, raise your hand. If the gist of it, Abrabuzur Jawad Kartata, I mean, asked, asked a question to me, the gist of it, did you understand it? There's no need to, I mean, our youngsters can understand Gujarati. There is absolutely no need for us to translate to a language which belongs to us. We should, we should be ashamed of that in that sense. I'm sorry, I don't mean in a nasty way, but I think that every one of you should understand. And if you haven't understood, I'll translate it. Anyone? Okay. Yeah. All right, Kashish. Basically, <laughs> basically, the Buzurg is uh, saying that how come that the youngsters are not coming and participating in a way they should? So that's the gist of it. It seems that they've lost interest in the community work or the community uh, functions, and they are, they are not to be seen. And that's a sorry state of affair. So he thinks that I will have an answer. <laughs> Should I? There'll be a party tonight. There'll be hundreds of them here. <laughs> no, I, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, if there was something which was interesting to them that we were playing Scrabble or we had table tennis here, or we had garata here, then there will be lots here. But why come for an educational thing which is very useful to our community and which will be useful to them later on in the future? Sorry, you say it. Yeah. I want to answer that. Should I yeah, answer yeah. it first? Okay. I know Gujarati ma bolu wando na thini tamne. ગુજરાતી માં શા માટે કારણ કે સમજાવતા જરાક નહીં નહીં એ લોકોને સમજાવી દેશો સમજાવી દેશો એ લોકોને જો આપણે કોઈને કુવા પાસે લઈ આવે કુવા પાસે તો લઈ આવ્યા પણ પછી એને કે પાણી પી ને ન પીએ તો પછી શું કરીએ આપણે આ એક મોટો પ્રોબ્લેમ છે આપણને આજે યંગસ્ટર્સનું માઇન્ડસેટ શું છે આજે કઈ કઈ જાતના એ લોકોના ચેલેન્જીસ છે એ લોકોના પોતાના એ લોકોને શું એટ્રેક્ટ કરે છે શું એટ્રેક્ટ નથી કરતું ને શું કરે છે એ આપણને જાણવાની જરૂર છે કે નહીં ભલે 
જ્યારે આપણે એ જાણીએ ત્યારે આપણે એ લોકો માટે એવા પ્રોગ્રામો પણ બનાવી શકીએ કે એ લોકોને ઇન્ટરેસ્ટિંગ લાગે આજે આપણે ચાલીસ મિનિટની મજલીસો રાખે અને ચાલીસ મિનિટ સુધી આજે એટેન્શન સ્પાન એ લોકોનું ન હોય તો પછી આપણને ચેન્જ થવું જોઈએ કે એ લોકોને ચેન્જ થવું જોઈએ હા કોમ્પ્રોમાઇઝ થવું જોઈએ બરાબર છે એટલે આપણને ચેન્જ થવું જોઈએ કે ભાઈ આપણે એવા પ્રોગ્રામો રાખીએ અને એવા માણસોને આપણે બોલાવીએ કે જે એ લોકોના જે સવાલો મગજમાં છે એ લોકોના જવાબો મેમ્બરથી અપાઈ શકતા હોય કોમ્યુનિટી આપી શકતી હોય એ લોકોના કોઈ પણ એવા બર્ડન્સ હોય તો એ આપણે એ બર્ડન્સ ઉપાડી શકીએ બરાબર કે નહીં જ્યારે આપણે એવો હિસાબ કિતાબ રાખશું આપણો ત્યારે આપણે જોશું કે આ યંગસ્ટર્સને થશે કે અહીંયા આવવામાં કંઈક ફાયદો છે પણ જો એ લોકોને એમ લાગે કે અહીંયા આવવામાં કંઈ ફાયદો જ નથી તો પછી આપણે જેટલું અહીંયા ટ્રાય કરશું બેકાર છે તો પેલી વસ્તુ જે આપણને કરવાની છે એ આપણને સાથે બેસીને જાણવાનું છે કે આજના વખતમાં આ લોકોની જરૂરિયાતો શું છે હવે એ જરૂરિયાતો માટે આ બધા રિસર્ચો અને આ પ્રોજેક્ટને ચાર વર્ષથી આપણે ધક્કા કરીએ છીએ પણ ઇન્શાલ્લા અલ્લાહ જો સાથ હશે ને તો આ પ્રોજેક્ટ સક્સેસફુલ થશે ને તમારી દુઆ હશે Now do you want me to translate all this? <laughs> uh, um, before I take any questions, I was just wondering if there was anyone from the floor that wanted to contribute to this answer um, on what... Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, according to what you said, that uh, we have to see what the youths are interested in. Uh, the thing is here that um, whoever said, I don't know his name, that if you have this karata and all these parties and they go running for it, well, I don't agree to that uh, to some extent because if you have a very good speaker in the mosque, the mosque is full with youths. Mm. So I think we have to look into, deep into ourselves what, where we are going wrong as elders to attract the youths to come to the mosque and take part in the community. So I think that's something we have to look into. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I think, uh, I think if we look, because um, there is no, um, no, uh, not a lot of young people in the hall tonight, it does not necessarily mean that uh, young people are not interested and we should not take it as a negative. Because, uh, to be honest, and I think uh, many of us may know this, uh, over the last 10, 15 years, there is a tendency of people of less people to attend meetings. I'm talking about professional institutions. For example, Institute of Management, the British Computer Society, Institute of Electrical Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, so on and so forth. There is over the last 10, and I work with, with some of these institutions, there are a tendency of uh, people who are member of these professional institutions, and they yet they do not come to, to, to meetings. So it is not necessarily It is negative or people are not interested. Thank you. Awesome. Um, any questions following? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Satyam. First of all, your presentation was really fantastic. Allah tamani wadari tawfiq ape amari dua che. Amin tamari harik murat puri kare. Mani aje das for rastya burning amma. But this is the first presentation I have seen. It's really fantastic. And I'm really happy that I've come to learn many things. And I want to speak something with the previous brother has spoken in Gujarat, if you don't mind. Ek sharam ni vaat che, ke ayya aapne yuts loka ne je khape che, e follow karwa tayar che, pan koi yuts awa mate tayar na thi, to tamne kai idea hoi to amne aapo, મારી જગા અહીંયા છે દર થર્સડે ના ઇટ્સ અ મેટર ઓફ શેમ કે આ ચાર લાઈન આખી ખાલી હોય છે યુથ માટે થઈને ઇંગ્લિશમાં પ્રોગ્રામ રાખવામાં આવે છે મોસ્ટલી સિનિયર્સ લોકોને મજા નથી આવતી એ લોકોની કમ્પ્લેન હોય છે કે એટલીસ્ટ અડધું અડધું કરો કે અડધી કલાક અને અડધી કલાક એવો ટાઈમ આવ્યો છે કે અત્યારે ફોર્ટી ફાઈવ મિનિટ્સ લેક્ચર ઇન ઇંગ્લિશ હોય છે છેલ્લે ખાલી ગમનું બયાન હોય છે બટ સિનિયર્સ લોકો ઈ બી સહન કરે છે ને કાંઈ ઓબ્જેક્શન નથી લેતા
આપણે બીજો શું રસ્તો કરીએ કે આપણા યુથ ને એટ્રેક્ટ કરીએ એ લોકોને ઇંગ્લિશ કપે છે ઇંગ્લિશ રાખે છે એ લોકોની ફેસિલિટી પ્રમાણે આપણે બધું કરીએ છીએ તો આઈ વુડ રિક્વેસ્ટ કે તમારા પાસે કોઈ આઈડિયા હોય અમે એલ્ડર્સ બધા સાથે કોન્ટ્રીબ્યુટ કરવા તૈયાર છે વી આર ઓલવેઝ રેડી ટુ હેલ્પ બી હેલ્પફુલ ટુ ધેમ એન્ડ કોઓપરેટ વિથ ધેમ ઇન્સ્પાયર ઓફ વી આર ગેટિંગ ટ્રબલ આજે આજે આખી લાઈફ આપણે ઉર્દુમાં મરજી સાંભળ્યા છે પણ અત્યાર સુધી બધું એ લોકોને ખપે છે કરવા તૈયાર છે ને એ લોકો સાથ ના આપે તો આપણને અફસોસ થાય છે એક્ચુઅલી ધીસ ઇઝ એડ્રેસિંગ કેન કેન આઈ હેવ ધી એટેન્શન ઓફ ધ યુથ પ્લીઝ હિયર કેન આઈ પ્લીઝ ધીસ ઇઝ એડ્રેસ ટુ ઓબ્વિયસલી વોટ ધી અંકલ ઇઝ સેઇંગ ઇઝ ધેટ યુ નો ઇન્સ્પાયર ધ ફેક્ટ ધેટ ધ પ્રોગ્રામ્સ ધેટ યુ હેવ રિક્વેસ્ટેડ ધ જમાત in spite of all that their effort that you still don't come so what could be the reason he's asking me to provide answer i am asking you to provide answers to him perhaps you may have some suggestion perhaps it's possible that the 14 minutes and 25 minutes are not the right uh, format anymore it's possible that the way we now recite duas and and other things may not be the right way of going about it you may have some suggestion have you got any suggestion i know you have mentioned uh, that you really have to deeply ask yourself as to what you want from this community and then all of us can deliver so have you got any thought processes of that nature that i could give to uncle here anyone youngsters from here yes okay I think I think in my view and this is my view personal view my opinion please, can we can we have attention please I think I think times have changed from where we were 20 years ago uh 30 years ago when we first uh were forming our community we are now living in a different era as you pointed out yourself attention spans are now a lot lower the audience the youth audience are very demanding the days of uh, uh zakir or molana sitting on the member and telling us an anecdotal story to drive uh, to drive out some meaning out of that those days are over we're now living in an evidential world where youths are demanding references strong references of what's being said so when when a reciter sits on that pulpit the youth want a very strong and dense message which is very applicable to today's day and age today's time in a practical way backed up by very strong evidence which hadith book did that come from which imam said that which quran hadith is being referred to that's one point right another point is weekdays are highly pressurized for a lot of youths highly pressurized we live in a in an extremely competitive globalized world like you said which means that most people most youths who are married both both husband and wife have to work right it wasn't like 30 years ago when when a single income would do in this day and age both husband and wife work all day come home and they have an equal share of work in the house it's not just the wife comes and cooks yeah the husband has to tend to the children while the wife cooks or the other way around one of them is cleaning one of them is preparing food they're telling stories to their children they're doing homework with them academia has become very tough yeah so there are far more demands so i think programs need to be shifted to a suitable time at the weekend when the, uh, when a family can make or, proper time for it it can't clash can't go on late night like right now okay it's a saturday but on a thir- if the, tonight was a, today was a thursday tonight was a thursday it would be untenable because it's already past lots of children's bedtime bedtime now is 7 o'clock for a lot of youngsters 7 8 o'clock at the latest right and thirdly i think we can't have 
uh, long, long programs. We, we need to have social time so that we can bond with each other as community members. We can't just keep on going on being lectured to, right? We need to be able to come here, have a 20-minute lecture and a 40-minute session where it could be a 10-minute breakout session in smaller groups where people can discuss what, what, what they just heard from the pulpit and how they will apply that to their daily lives, but then also get time to sit around and chat and share problems. Because a problem shared is a problem halved, isn't it? So those, that's my personal view is how we need to change our format. Can I uh, just make a comment? Um, we we're actually getting lots and lots of texts from youth saying that we are listening online. Uh, we really do feel this topic is really important for us, so let's not forget those people who are watching live uh, as well. Um, I've got one question from the ladies and then Muslim uh, Uncle. Thank you. Uh, that was a very good presentation. I think it was very appropriate, especially for me. I was trying to explain to a group of people who are from different faiths about what our mosque does. So I said we'd have a nursery, a senior citizen group, our youths, you know, feed the homeless in town, and they do lots of things. And Ashura, they give hot chocolate. And I said, we have a careers fair. And they wanted to know which mosque I came from. And I said, well, the Shia mosque. It's only somebody else said, well, well do all Shia do that, or which mosque? And then, sorry about that, but I, then at, later on I said, the Khoja mosque. I had forgotten to say that, but now I realize how important it is, and we are very unique, and we have come a long way, and uh, you know, and we are manifestations of the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, and they really appreciated what we do. So I think we have something very unique here, and we need to build on that. Awesome, thanks. Um, no, I think I yeah, I think it's Muslim uncle and then Haji uncle, yeah. I was born in Africa. So, I was English in Africa. I was born in Africa. I was born in Africa. I was born in Africa. I was in Africa. I in Africa. I was Molana Sai Burdu Sikara, India Sautata, Mula Murum Empidiam and Dinia Gujarati Marcus. At least I may see Kama, Musikoi, or Burma. Have any avenue? It is Mount Waiwo to Madresa, but the English Masatutu, Marabata, but the wife named Merit Pachiki Doke, Jo to Gujarati, to Gujarati boy, Unkachichu to Unkachibolis. Have you? Chokri nursery ma kya hai bhi to English ma bolay to beauty beauty na bolwano masha la bolwano hai na le ame change thay ki le baasha hai ke abe sab ne shoot hai se abe baasha nu tamhe kya chhu malis English ma thay to bachana dekha to Gujarat ki ma rakto to sab gum thay chhu malla ke shukar le kya chhu abe ek madre sahiya chhe ya Africa, Morum, Empidayata, India, Mane Dinat, Gujarati Masika, Sayad Molan, Urdu Sika, Nurgis by English Sika, Rababin Asudimaniaki, Ram, Luxman, Sita, Bodhuavre. Our Amara parents, forefathers, they had a mindset, a local cabaret to Aloka Gumra Tavana Chesdiva. Le Prabhabe ne raikha, Nargisbhai ne raikha, Mulana ne raikha, Badhi Swati kari. Amya abhi ne to jo English ma start kari na ka madres, awe matu piche. We've got Muslim on and I think there's a question at the back. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I was quite impressed with the um, presentation. It was quite good, alhamdulillah. The other, one thing I was thinking about, how is it that this problem about identity is faced by people in India, where the origin of Kojas was from? Is there any kind of problem they have over there? Because I understand, I as w when I went once 
there is a Momin community, Momin Shia Ishnashi community. They are not allowed to mingle or to be close to Khojas in any other way. In some ways, they have, there's so much discrimination between the two. So I was just thinking they are exactly like us, exactly like the Khojas, they are there in, of the Indian origin. But uh, there is still a lot of discrimination, and not only in, in India I'm talking, but of, also in Africa. How is it that we have been able to maintain the identity there, and is there any kind of problems that we have faced over the years? Yes, uh, Muslim, this is a very important question, uh, and I think that uh, um, what you are saying is that in our evolution as a community, we had to do through we have to go through quite a lot of struggles, struggles of us also in the wrong by discriminating those who were not part of us. But the important thing that we have always uh, we have to remember is that our values have always been universal because they've come from Ahlul Bayt. And therefore, the optimism or optimistic side of the thing is that with those values, we will become a community more adaptable, versatile, and accepting of others. And that is important. In India, for example, um, you know, many communities are at a different level of its own evolution because of the context that defines it. And therefore, if the core values and the core principles which are universal in nature are adopted, then these communities will again have an, a good evolution. Then. But it's just a matter of time and knowledge and education. So that would be my take on it. Because when you go to India, you would see that if you go to the city, it's different. If you go to the villages, it's different. Our community, that is. And, and so, you know, by intermingling of the Koja community, in the conferences, uh, exchanges. We do give, uh, exchange good information and way, of, way forward for uh, our, our good evolution. So that's, the, that's, that's my optimism there. Did I answer your question? Um, <clears throat> I think we, we have a few questions lined up. Um, I think there's someone from the chairs, yeah. ઇસ્માઇલ બહુ જ ખૂબ જ મહેનત કરીને કેટલા પુસ્તકો એમણે ગુજરાતીમાં લખ્યું છે ફેન્ટાસ્ટિક છેલ્લે સુધી કુરઆન પણ ગુજરાતી લિપિમાં કુરઆન અને એનો તરજુમો પણ કર્યો છે ગુજરાતીમાં પણ આ બધી પુસ્તકો પછી ક્યાં જ હશે જો આપણે આપણા બચ્ચાઓને આપણા જે નવી જનરેશનને ઉગતી જનરેશનને જો આપણે આપણી ભાષાને લખતા વાંચતા ન શીખવાડીએ તો આ પુસ્તકો જશે ક્યાં કચરાની ટોપલીમાં એક બીજું કે લોહીનું પાણી કરીને કેટલું મહેનત કરીને આપણે સુધી આ મજા પહોંચાડ્યું તો મજહબી રીતે પણ આપણે આપણી ભાષામાં આપણે પેશકશ કરી શકીએ છીએ કેમ નહીં અને આ વસ્તુ કરવા માટે મને એક રસ્તો સૂજી આવે છે કે યંગર જનરેશનમાં ઉગતી યુવકો અને યુવતીઓ માટે આપણે એવો પ્રોગ્રામ કરીએ દાખલા તરીકે ડિબેટિંગ સોસાયટી ડિબેટિંગમાં આપણે આ ભાષા મૂકીએ કે કેટલા તરફેણમાં છે ને કેટલા અગેન્સ્ટમાં છે કેટલા વિરુદ્ધમાં છે તો આ બાબત માટે જો આ બાસી યુથ વાળા જો પગલા ભરે આ દિશા આ દિશામાં તો મને લાગે છે કઈક પ્રગતિ થવાનો સંભવ છે આસન નો તમે ગુજરાતમાં સમજાવું તમને જરાક કે આપણા બુઝુર્ગ આપણને કહે છે કે ઇન ઇંગ્લિશ આઈ વિલ એક્સપ્લેન કે ધી અવર ગ્રેટ ગ્રાન્ડ ફાધર્સ shed blood and sweat to bring the mazhab of Ahlul Bayt to us. And are we just going to forsake it now? The Gujarati language, such a beautiful language, uh, and the work done by Allama Haji Naji, who has passed away, fantastic work he has done to bring religion to us and to our 
fathers and grandfathers. Should we forget our language now? So what he's suggesting is that there should be a debate amongst the youth on the language of Gujarati, whether we should preserve it or we should not preserve it. And let us hear their views. And I think it's a wonderful suggestion, a one step forward and a bus youth from uh, a bus committee. A bus youth committee can easily uh, function this program and um, you can bring me as a chair, if you like. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I've got Mohamed Riyaz there. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think there's a couple of points as well that you've touched on in other platforms that also need to be assessed in, in line with this. One is the role of the families and the other is the role of the madrasa. And I know you've, you've touched on this topic quite a bit in, in other presentations that you've made. I think the sense of belonging needs to be promoted very much in, at a family setting as well. Uh, and also in the madrasa. Um, we've had these discussions about Koja identity quite a bit now in terms of information. And I think, personally, it needs to be promoted at a madrasa level as well. As far as the language and all these sorts of things are concerned, at a family level, these things need to be set. And I think there needs to be seminars held for parents in order to equip them with the necessary things so that they can take that back and then, in their homes, start promoting some of these things. One particular example is the sense of tolerance. We live in an environment which is very much around consumer rights. All, it's, everything is about what's our right. We come, what does the mosque do for us? We go somewhere else, what do they do for us? Whereas we've come from a community where there's a lot of giving as well, right? When I grew up in Mombasa, for example, I used to go into a lecture, I'd listen to an Urdu Marlis, I never used to understand half of it, I'd sit there. Today, we'd have people who'd come in, uh, and if it's Urdu, they'd just walk out, because they say, well, I'd rather listen to something else online. It's just that sense of tolerance, right? Just sitting there, just thinking, okay, I'm still in the center, um, there will be some sort of value that I'll get out of it. And promoting some sort of things at family level, I think, are quite important as well. Mohammed Riyaz. Mohammed, it's a very, very good suggestion. In fact, the Awakening Project deals with uh, the very things that you, that you brought up. Uh, in my estimation, uh, the family, the member, and the madrasa has to sing from the same song sheet because that's the only way you can actually make an impact. And that's my struggle. And that's what awakening is all about. So I take your point. I think you make a very, and I think I like your point about tolerance. I think that young people have to tolerate respectfully. I think rather than toleration, respect. Because with toleration, you would tolerate things which you, but with knowledge, you create understanding and then respect the fact that the community has gone out of its way to provide you with these sort of functions. So, you know, all of us have to respect the young and the young has to respect the community and the elders and all of us have to respect each other and I think respect and trust with which we should move forward. I think there was this, yeah. this guy. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much for this good and inspiring lecture. Uh, unfortunately, I was born non-Khoja. I was born in Najaf in Iraq. But since my involvement with, the, with this great community over 25 years, I must uh, say that I have learned a lot and I always advise other minority communities, such as Yemeni and my own community, Iraqis, to go and learn from the from the Khoja community in many aspects. However, when I listen to the lecture, and please forgive me if I'm uh, if I'm having some uh, critical views on on it, I <coughs> I felt I felt that you 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 presented okay the core values, the family, Imam Bara, the school, and so on and so forth. But I haven't heard, and could be the lack in, in my in my listening, I haven't heard what are actually the parameters, what are the factors which we, as a Khoja community, we are beginning to lose our sense. We haven't lost our sense, 
and by God's will and by Ahl al-Bayt, inshallah, we never lose our sense. But uh, what are the parameters? This lecture must base on, okay, you mentioned the awakening uh, project, but actually do you have evidence? Do you have some evidence that we as a Hoja community, we are beginning to lose our, our sense of identity? Thank you very much. And apology if I, if I left. First of all, this is uh, this is something which is um, which is a research-based project. So it's as uh, the the person said, it's evidentiary. You saw some of the comments from Africa, North America, Europe. So you understand what the pulse of the community is talking. I just gave you part of it, part of the scenario. But of course, in my four years, I have collected a lot of evidences, and uh, uh, the one of the questions that 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 comes now and then is the identity itself issue because my own community perhaps do not have the real understanding of its legacy and because it doesn't have an understanding of its legacy there's a lot of misunderstanding and misrepresentation and this particular lecture tells my own community that look you have fantastic values upon which you can now move forward Okay, so you don't have to be insular. You have a good legacy that you can preserve, but based on the values, we can move forward. So this is the sense that I'm looking. And that's the parameter that we have to understand. And as a community, we have to understand that we have a lot of things going for us. And let's build on it rather than remain passive and not understanding some of these things which are part and parcel for our community as given by our great-grandfathers, as a community based on the mazhab of Ahlul Bayt. So if we can move the community on the values based on maz mazhab of Ahlul Bayt, it will be a better community, and it will be a more adaptable community in the future. <coughs> okay. um, I have a question from a uh, text. You have mentioned about our Shia madhab. What do you think are the core components of koja ness that are important to uphold and why? Why can we not have a thin community with Shia as the central circle? Now, this is a very complicated question and it will take me half an hour to answer, but a very short uh, um, answer to this is that um, what is a koja community then? I mean, a Khoja community, first of all, the legal definition was given by the court in Bombay. And the Khoja community is um, a socio-religious community, basically. Um, a Khoja is born in a community. You, you, <laughs> you, to be a Khoja, you have to be part of the community. Now, it doesn't mean that we cannot broaden uh, the, uh, the definitions ourselves. But we were given this particular definition and we have understood culturally uh, that we have that particular legacy. So Khojaism, if you ask me what is, a, what is Khojaism, a Khojaism is something that our uh, great-grandfather, our language, sorry, uh, not great-grandfather, our language, our cultural nuances, which are basically Gujarati, uh, the way we were molded in the first instance and then passed on and then defined and redefined and redefined again according to the circumstances that we faced ourselves. But fundamentally, if you ask me what is Koja's dynamism is, the Koja's dynamism is the values of Ahlul Bayt which have preserved us for 160 years. That is my take on it. I understand that, but those values are Islamic values. They're not particularly to Khojas. So how are we losing identity? We still have the same names. You know, our surnames are the same. We still come to the same Imam Bara. Okay, we're not having the same language, but that language was originally Hindu's language. It wasn't a, a Muslim Islamic language as such, right? It was, it, was, it was the legacy from the Hindus that we took upon. And a lot of our cultures, that what we eat, what we the way we, we uh, act is, is come from the Indian subcontinent. So the values are Islamic. They're not Khoja values, right? 
So how are we losing the identity? I think you have to clarify your own question, if I may say so, because it's, it's quite layered. But if I can just simplify it for you, that when you say uh, Khoja values, there is no such thing as Khoja values, by the way. What we have is a Khoja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity based on uh, uh, the values of Ahlul Bayt. You see, it started with Khoja Satpanthi, and then it became Khoja Shia Ishnashri Muslim. So we have multiple identities. Now, if we already became, we, we started to evolve into this multiple identity, which have served us very well, based on the Islamic values, fundamentally, we are Islamic. We, our values are Islamic. But our legacy and our heritage, as I've explained to you, is that. So what I'm saying is not Koja. I'm saying Koja, Shia, Ishnashri, Muslim identity. Now, what this means is that if we give up our values, our values, which are al Baita values, right? Then we will give up our identity, which is Koja, Shia, Ishnashri, Muslim identity. Basically, today, our values are not Koja values. Our values are al Bayt values. That's why we are, that is why our identity is Koja, Shia, Ishnashri, Muslim identity. Koja being a core value in that sense, that we have a legacy and understanding that where we came from. Today, if I were to tell you, Nikat, where did you come from? Where I came from, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a geographical thing. Well, absolutely. But so, you know, at the end of the day, you would say, I come from Gujarat. Well, where did you come from in Gujarat? You would say this. Okay, then, you know, you go down, 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 you will find that there is a element of <laughs> yeah, I understand that. But what I'm saying, when you say this is the values we came upon, but they are Shia, Shia absolutely. human value, yeah, absolutely. values. Yeah. So Iranis not, have the same. Iranis, yeah. so, if you say, if you say, yeah, talk about Iranis, what are their values? Exactly what the same. What is Iranis Shia values? What is Iraqi yeah. Shia, Lebanese Shia? You see, all, all, all of them have Ahlul Bayt, and that is the values which are going to bring us together. Exactly. So, so we are, we are um, so we Shia are Ishnashri first, right? <laughs> we can say we are Shia Ishnashri first, no problem about that. No problem about that. But our identity is what we are talking about. Um, I think, uh, I know we have a few questions, and it's really getting heated. Oh, no, uh, no, it's not heated. <laughs> Everybody's getting uh, excited. Um, but the food is here, and I have been asked to wrap up. If I can just take one last comment. The other suggestion we've had is, can we serve the food and carry on the question answer? But that's up to you. Vote. So if we can have a show of hands, who, if you want to carry on the question answer session, uh, please keep your hands up. We'll leave it till half ten and then serve the food. Sorry? Okay, okay, we'll serve and inshallah finish by half ten. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Just, just to say the chair lady is my niece, by the way. Um, I, I think Muslim Ankar and then we'll do Naib Ankar, yeah? Uh, I think Shia is Nasri is our value, really. And Koja is a prefix. So it's just like, as you mentioned, you would probably answer the question where, by saying that Iranians could be Irani Shia Ashnashri community, Iraqi Shia Ashnashri community, and we happen to be a Koja Shia Ashnashri community, that's all. There are certain nuances there. Uh, it's not only the youngsters that uh, we can blame all the time. Uh, sometimes it's the uh, elders or uh, members in the community. I remember uh, quite a long time ago, even in Birmingham, uh, the issue came in that in our constitution we should remove the word Koja and leave it to Shia, as it has happened in America and some other Tamas in Europe. So I think that uh, in our constitution, the word Koja should never ever be removed. That's one of the things for our identity. Naibanko and then Sibiha, yeah? Um, I'm an honorary Kocha, 
right? So I also, like Dr. Hadi here, uh, was not born a codger, but I've been <clears throat> embraced into the community because I'm married to a codger. So I wanted to also touch upon that very briefly. Um, I was paying a lot of attention to the dynamics. You were talking about the underpinning principles of our faith. Just wanted to touch upon one very simple point about language. Now, my elder daughter, born in Tanzania, speaks Swahili fluently, as so does my wife. I'm also African, but from a different part of Africa where we don't speak Swahili. But I learned Swahili because I spent a lot of time in East Africa. When our younger daughter was born, we thought she's born in the UK. Which language do we teach her? It came to a very simple principle. Once the children leave the house environment, they're going to speak English anyway, regardless. So we've made a, a simple rule in our home that you can speak one of three or four languages. Gujarati, Swahili, Urdu, or Arabic. Because we also want to maintain that point of reference that language is very critical. It's very pivotal for us. Yes, we have the, the shared faith. We're both Shiesh Nashris, etc. I'm not a Kodja, like I said. But for us, our bond, our strongest bond in terms of raising our family is to gel it together using the language as a point of reference. Of course, the Islamic element is where it is. That's all I want to, to point out. No, I think that you make a very important point. Um, I mean, I being, I, you know, non koja and koja distinction, I do not like it in this. Um, of course, it happens. But, you know, the way you created a principle because you understood the importance of a language and that created such a harmony within the home because they're going to learn English out there anyway. But at home with the language, which are basically Eastern languages, um, they will have Eastern ethos, an ethos that you are familiar with and you're comfortable with. And that is, they're not going to get it from outside. And that's an important point, very important point. I think that that principle should be with everyone, every family should have a principle like that. Could be Gujarati, it could be Urdu. But, you know, we mustn't forget our... Heritage, that's the point, you know. I <clears throat> um, have a really interesting question uh, by text. Uh, if our heritage and language is Gujarati and Kachi, then why do we have our lectures in Urdu? Our languages are not the at the exclusion of others. This is not our way. <laughs> we have uh, Gujarati, Kachi, Urdu, uh, Swahili, learn as many language as you can. That's what our grandfather, great-grandfather did. I think that we are losing the trait of learning as many languages. By all means, learn as many languages and uh, let us uh, be versatile and be multilingual about it. Uh, the point that I'm making is that let us not forget uh, our Gujarati language, which is our heritage. Um, one more question. In our election for our community, which was touched upon before, if we allowed non-Kojas to be elected, do you think we will lose our Koja identity? What's the question? Um, if, if in our elections we allow for non-Kojas to be elected, do you think we will lose our Koja identity? Koja identity is not based on elections. Uh, Koja identity is, is based on history, heritage, values, all that. So um, election has nothing to do with our identity. Okay, a brother who is a non-Koja, 
uh, is saying that he was a part of the executive committee in Birmingham and he said that in fact he was pushing for the Khoja identity and, and nothing has happened to Birmingham Jamaat. So. So, um, sorry, just to clarify that question, do you mean then if there's a non-Koja person, uh, as long as they are um, promoting Koja values, they are okay to be, or is there any condition? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that community organizes themselves according to the values that uh, they happen to have. And our values are Ahlul Baitu values, that is not. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, these values uh, d uh, prevents us from offering services to everyone, every others. But if we organize ourselves to administer a center or a jamaat based on the ethnicity of a very poor community that has built it, then um, I don't see um, any uh, conflict there. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Uh, first of all, uh, mashallah, very good uh, presentation. Secondly, I'm a Nanahoja, born and bred here in Birmingham. My parents came in the 60s and uh, they were born in India, which is now Pakistan, from the Punjab. Right, in the 70s, basically, I seen the first Hojas who came from Uganda. This is before anybody came from Tanzania or Kenya or Somalia. At that time, there was only two non Hoja families. One of them was... Sorry, please, can I just have uh, some silence so we can hear the question? Right. At that time, in the 70s, there was only two non Hoja families. One of them was mine and uh, another uncle. And we used to attend the house Majalis before the center was built. And we've seen how strict the Hoja community was at that time. Some even described them as being racist as well, because you could not be a, become a member if you was a Nanahoja. Slowly over the three decades, we've seen a lot of changes. And, uh, you know, I've seen so many youth who don't actually attend, you know, for various reasons. Some are a bit political. They, you know, prefer one mullah now to another sheikh. And, uh, you know, they're boycotting others, stay at home, watch online. Some have basically, you know, stopped attending uh, altogether and stopped listening online as well. Right. Uh, with the Gujarati, uh, them not understanding. I think, you know, like the, like the Sikhs, they teach the Punjabi at schools and colleges. And mashallah, we've got Sayyidah Zainab al building here, so why don't we teach Gujarati and Urdu there as well? And, uh, yeah. No, no, it isn't too late. It's never too late until your last breath. And, uh, I mean, there's, this, there's a saying of Imam Ali al-Islam, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, do not bring your children up the way your parents brought you up. Because that was a different era, and this is a different time. And they will need a uh, different the upbringing, basically. So I think, uh, you know, we need to look at all different angles as well. I mean, like I said, I'm born and bred here. And in the 70s, when the first Hojas came here, I remember there was only three channels on TV. BBC One, BBC Two, ITV. All three of them used to turn off at about half 11. And you were lucky if you had a color television, most people had black and white. But now, over the years, we had so many channels, we've got too much distraction. The children have got internet on their mobile phones, and, you know, Sky, Sports, et cetera, et cetera, like, eh? and uh, basically there's too much distraction for the kids. And, I mean, you know, I don't know what the solution is, but, uh, you know, I think you could probably start with Gujarati and Urdu classes at, the, say, the Zainab al-Islam building. That <laughs> Your Thank suggestion you. about Thanks. starting the classes, uh, Gujarati classes, are very, very, I think they're very important. Gujarati, Urdu, Arabic, of course, of course. But one question to you, you're happy. You're happy. I'm happy, uh, alhamdulillah. Good, okay. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're attending right, uh, okay. you know, from day one, alhamdulillah. Of our community, and, of course. And mashallah, like yeah. I said, I'm of course. I saw him first. Yeah, why not? Yeah, they, are, they are part and parcel of our community, of course. And lastly, uh, what I want to say is, if me as a Birmingham-born uh, descendant from Pakistani Punjabi community, I can understand Gujarati, and I've never been to, you know, East Africa or anything like that. So, you know, I think the children who are born and bred, you know, you know okay. they, they, they should try. You know, I'll tell family. you one thing. Uh, the way things are going, my friend, the way things are going, a time will come 
if we if you sit with us if you stand with us if you eat with us then you will be part of us and you will be a koja then this is what will happen because that's the value of ahlul bayt alayhim assalam i'm just going to take two final comments because it's uh, already half 10 so i can um why does he have to be koja like why does if what is the um there's a, a feeling as to what is the necessity to even have the word koja there i understand it's our heritage and our identity but if the values are the same amongst iraqis iranian the youth at the moment we want unity and currently in my opinion the unity is not there if i say to you oh i have a, i'm a koja shia nashri yes i have great um positive things that come out of our culture but how am i going to combine all of these positivities to one because to be honest in our madrasas we've got iraqis and iranians how are we supposed to preserve gujarati preserve our koja identity in madrasa if we've got so many it'll become like cliques you won't be able to have uh, okay yeah. all right okay <laughs> thank you sabia yeah, it was such a good question shall i tell you one thing if i if i were to say what's your name sabiha give up that name everyone give up your name We are all same. We, we all believe. No wait. We, we all believe in the same values. You see, the fact that we have names, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al-Hujurat that He has created us, nations and groups, so that we can know each other. Okay. So basically, we have organized ourselves to make certain things happen in our community, and we have organized as a Khoja community. so that people can identify if another person comes of the same cultural values wait a minute then he would say oh where is the khoja imam bar so i can go and share my difficulties or whatever the case may be a time will come inshallah a time will come when we will all, we will still have the khojas and the iraqis and the iran but we will all be together under one value under the hujja 12th imam imam sahib zaman ali we're working towards that we are encouraging sabia we are encouraging the values the values of khoja shia ishnashi muslim community are the values of ahlul bayt alayhim assalam of course and that is the reason why we should all be under that value get on and coexist you see if i'm a i'm a panjwani family and you are a <laughs> hey if somebody wants to know which panjwani family it is because i'm getting confused <laughs> that's identity um just a final question uh, comment here just a couple of things um i think i'm not very clear on your presentation or your question or what exactly are we trying to achieve or answer or seek answers to uh, is it if the core values are universal then what are we losing i mean uh, clearly i think it is a cojaness we're talking about I, i yes okay but but we're losing yeah so if the values are the same and it's highly unlikely we'll lose those values are we worried about losing those values or are we worried about losing the koja identity that's one the other thing is if, if the khoja doesn't make a difference does that mean we open our constitution uh, to allow non khoja members to vote or i'm confused and in light of what you say the member and the madrasas i mean I think they invested heavily in the uh, so invested a lot. You see your uh, you're saying you're confused about the presentation. Um, I'm talking about the Khoja Shia Ishnashri Muslim identity because that's our identity. I'm not talking about Khoja identity. I'm talking about Khoja Shia 
we have evolved from Koja Sat Panthi into this identity. This identity is based on the values. The values that I have just described to you, that these are values that are our values. So now, you see, you're mixing this and then the constitution and then the election, uh, the office bearers and all that. First, we have to understand that KSI, Koja Shia Ashraf Muslim community is underpinned by Ahlul Bayt values. Now that's very important understanding to have. If we lose those values, and we can lose it because of the challenges that we are facing, you may think that we are okay. How many of our community youngsters do not even come to the center? Many of them have questions their own faith. How many of them are like that? Have we got any demographic statistics on that? We don't know. So you see, there are challenges out there and the immense number of challenges. So basically, if we don't strengthen our values, then we lose our identity, which is given to us as part of our heritage. Now looking forward, if we look forward as to how we are going to live in this diverse world, then one thing that is going for us is our values. Let's not lose our values. Use our values to broaden our identity. And as we broaden our identity, inshallah one day we will have a diverse Koja community. Koja Shia Ishnashri Muslim community. Maybe these people who have joined us may not have a Koja heritage, but they will still be part of our community based on the values that we have, which is Ahlul Bayt values. Now, to the question of constitution and all that, that's another discussion. I have points for that. I have reflections for that. But that's not part of the discussion here. The question was the sense. Are we losing that sense? Well, it, we, you saw it. We're not losing it completely. But we've got to take interest and actively make sure that we don't lose it. Because this is something very valuable for us. That's the importance of it. So what is your one way forward? What is your way forward to I make just, sure we don't? I, the last slide. Didn't you, weren't you here for the last slide? You weren't here and then you're, you can't make a judgment, my friend, when you're not here to listen to me. Okay? Now the last slide gave a, present, uh, gave a conclusion that we've got so many things going for us and we must use that to broaden our identity, to move our, for, to move our community forward in a, di in a diverse world. Uh, I do apologize. I know there's lots and lots of questions and comments, but uh, unfortunately, I have to wrap this up. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, Sipta Mama, for enlightening us and lots of comments that we got. <laughs> uh, and lots of comments and questions which were very, very enlightening. Um, definitely lots of food for thought. Um, I think as youth we tend to, f we, we don't want to associate ourselves as Kojas because we feel that we should be united. But I think ultimately when the question is asked, who are you and where are you from, our answer is Koja, even though our values are the same, but I think it's really important for us to take pride in the fact that we have a heritage. Um, and so there's lots of food for thought, so thank you very much. Um, Sitte Nama's uh, videos and articles will be available from the Awasi Youth website uh, and Facebook page, uh, so you can definitely read up on that. Any final comments? Yes, just one final comment. I'm really thankful for the, the debate. Uh, and also some of the opinions that you have given, some of the ideas, including um, brother who, the last speaker who, who also gave very good ideas. Uh, all of you, I'm very thankful to you. Now, uh, this is an ongoing project. It doesn't mean that we have final solutions. What, what we have is something going for us, and then we should use what we have as positive things within our community to move forward as a community in this diverse world. Okay. Um, the final comment I also received was one, uh, from one of the office bearers of our Jamaat who said, the office bearers are open to any suggestions put forward by the youth and are guaranteeing that they will empower the youth as long as they just come forward. Um, with that, I would like to call Brother Zainali to recite uh, Ziyara and we will end the program with that. Brother Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, salawat.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا خديجة الكبرى السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى تسعة المعصومين من ذريتك علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة بن الحسن القائم المهدي عجل الله فرجا وسهل الله مخرجا وظهورا وجعلنا من أنصاري وأعواني والمستشهدين بين يدي يا الله السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته